Hi folks, welcome back. Today it's time for a retirement party or a retirement celebration. We need to say goodbye to an old friend and that friend is my 18 inch White Oak Armament SPR barrel. I bought this barrel about two years ago and it has been a great shooter. Like it has completely changed the way I think about accuracy in the AR-15 platform. Yes, that dramatic. As soon as we slapped it in and started playing with it, all of my groups started to shrink and it was really an eye opener about how a quality barrel can improve the performance of your AR-15. All of this is well documented in my 223 playlist. Now, since that time, we've put a bunch of shots through the, through the barrel, at least 5,000 I would think, and it's still a great shooter. Right up here to our most recent videos, it's a great shooter. So it is retiring with its health intact. Its replacement is already here. I decided to replace it with a 20 inch white oak armament predator barrel, a little bit heavier profile. It's got a 0.875 inch gas block rather than a 0 0.750 like the SPR barrel. It's just a little bit heavier profile barrel, but not quite as heavy as the White Oak Varmint series. Like their Varmint barrels, I think, are, are the heavy profile. This Predator is kind of an in-between. A little bit of weight savings versus the Varmint barrels. Now, why in the world would I swap out a perfectly good shooting barrel? Well, I've got an acquaintance, maybe a friend, maybe a family member. We're not going to get too specific. He's very paranoid, or I, I should say he or she is very paranoid. We don't want the government to be able to watch this video and find out who owns this gun. Right, we're driving straight through that gun show loophole on this one. Now this acquaintance of mine, I promised, it's been a couple of years, I promised to build them an AR-15. I said, hey, I've got a bunch of spare parts laying around. I can basically put together an AR-15 for you and it won't cost much of anything. Well, like I said, that was a couple years ago. I had bought a stripped lower and just never got around to putting one together for him or him or her. I had originally planned to give him one of these barrels. One of these is a Palmetto State Armory 5.56 barrel and the other is an AR Stoner 5.56 barrel. Now, if you go far enough back into my videos with these, you'll see that they both shoot terrible, like really bad. This is what I was trying to squeeze accuracy out of before we made that switch to White Oak Armor. Well, instead of putting together a crappy shooting gun for them, I decided to just go ahead and give them this 18 inch White Oak Armament SPR barrel. It's still got plenty of service life in it and it will enjoy a retirement of recreational mag dumps and occasional hunting duty, right? So it's got lots of life, it still shoots well, so it deserves a nice retirement. As you can see, I've got some Magpul iron sights strapped on there. This is a, this is an Aero Precision M4E1 upper and handguard combo. I used the Aero Precision M5E1 set when I built my AR-10 uppers and I was really impressed. So I needed to buy an upper and, and uh, handguard combo for this gun and I also needed a couple more for myself. So like I already showed you, my new 20 inch white oak armament barrel is also in this same Aero Precision upper and handguard combo. And I decided to go get some flat dark earth stuff because there were a couple times recently where I'm having trouble telling my uppers apart. My 22 nozzle barrel and actually this 18 inch SPR barrel, they don't have any markings up at the end of the barrel that you can read with the handguard on. So I was constantly trying to remember which one was which. I kind of felt like I might be heading towards making a big mistake, shooting the wrong ammo in, the, in an upper. And plus I just haven't had enough uppers for all of the barrels I want to shoot. So like my 224 Valkyrie barrel hasn't had an upper for a while now. Well, now it does. Because like I said, I picked up a couple of these. One of them's going to be my 223. The other will be 224 Valkyrie. And we'll have enough uppers around here to have everything put together because I've kind of been playing musical barrels, constantly swapping barrels into uppers depending on what I needed to shoot and make videos on at that, uh, at that time. So this upper, I put one of my 4 to 16 by 44 uh, Vortex Viper scopes. This is the HS, yeah, this is the, the HS. And I picked up one of these SWFA SSALT bases. It's a lot like the, eh, what's that other one I use? The Burris Pepper, the Pepper Mount. Kind of one of these one piece cantilever bases for AR-15. They, they've been doing fine. This SWFA design is, is pretty much exactly like the Burris. So I've got several 24 power scopes now. So this 16 power scope, I haven't really been shooting it lately. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this to my acquaintance when I give them the gun. The lower parts, oh, 
Uh, one more piece, I did put one of my Silencer Co. flash hiders on there. And for the gas block, which you're not gonna be able to see, but I put a white oak armament gas block on here. I've had an adjustable gas block on there for the longest time, but this person isn't gonna be shooting suppressed. So standard gas block, I decided to just go ahead and pick one up to finish that out. Like I mentioned, I've had a stripped lower for this person for a long time. I had a Magpul, I think this is the MOE, you know, the standard Magpul stock. I had one of these laying around, so that's going on that. Carbine length buffer tube, buffer spring, all of that crap is all very standard. But when I got the lower parts kit from White Oak Armament, they offer one, this is the ALG Combat Trigger. It's basically just, a, I think, a fancier and slightly lightened uh, mil-spec type trigger. It's, it's okay. It's a little bit heavier than what I've been using lately, but it's definitely an improvement over the mil-spec trigger. But I've been shooting the LaRue MBT trigger a lot. I kind of wish I would have just gone ahead and picked up a LaRue for this guy. It's a little bit crisper. Like, this guy's kind of creepy. Got some creep to it. So for bench work, shooting groups, that sort of stuff, I would definitely prefer the LaRue, but the owner of this gun, they don't, they won't care. This is a nice upgrade over the mil spec and it'll be just fine for them. Otherwise, everything's totally standard here. So standard lower, that's our upper. Now my new barrel is in a very similar configuration. Yeah, there's the Burris Pepper mount. We, we've been using these for a couple years here on my channel. This has my six to 24 power Vortex Diamondback tactical scope. So we've got there, that on there for today's tests. And these Predator barrels actually come with, this, this one might actually give you a little bit better view of their gas block, or I think they call it a gas manifold. It's a large gas block. And that was another thing I liked about the Aero Precision M4E1. There's lots of room in here, right? It's kind of a big handguard, but I got big old meaty hands. I like having a, you know, a big handguard to get a hold of anyway. And it leaves you plenty of room for gas block clearance. You're never really gonna to have to worry about gas block clearance. One thing I love about this Predator barrel is that it comes threaded 5 8 24. Like that's the larger threading. Most 223 barrels, like your standard mil spec flash hiders and stuff, your, your standard 223 AR-15 is gonna be a half inch 28 thread. This is 5 8 24. This is the, the larger, the the size you'll see on like my 6.5s and 30 caliber stuff. So what I can do is I can just use my direct thread adapter on my suppressor and it screws right on this guy with no adapter. So this was a big deal for me. I'm happy to see it 5H24. If you happen to pick up one of these Predator barrels, be sure you take that into account. And if you're buying a muzzle brake or something at the same time, it might actually be a little bit difficult to find a 22 caliber muzzle device that's threaded 5H24. So just something to keep in mind. Now, the reason I decided to switch from the SPR to the Predator, first of all, I just wanna try something different, right? I know, the, I know the SPR barrel's awesome, and I thought the Predator, we'd go, you know, we'd go ahead and go to a 20 inch, pick up a little bit more velocity, although I love that 18 inch size, right? Like that 18 inch SPR barrel makes for a very handy package, but I decided to go ahead and go with a 20 incher. This guy is a rifle length gas system where my SPR barrel was a mid length gas system. Now the SPR, they offer them in both mid length and rifle length. But at the time, I think rifle length was out of stock and I just went with the mid length. And it's been fine. Like I've been totally happy with the mid length gas system. The SPR barrel also comes in both a one in seven or a one in eight twist. At the time, I think it was the same deal, although the one in seven wasn't in stock, so I just went ahead and picked up a one in eight. I've been totally happy. Like we've shot lots of pretty heavy bullets. Like we've got a whole series full of uh, videos about the 77 grain Sierra Match King. They shoot great in the one in eight twist. And honestly, anything heavier than that isn't really going to fit in your magazine and really doesn't interest me all that much. I'm not gonna be single feeding super heavy bullets into my AR. So when I got the new, uh, barrel, I decided to go with a one and eight twist as well. So the Predator barrel, 20 inches, one and eight twist. I think I mentioned it does have the larger gas block, 0.875 inch gas block, and it just seemed like a good fit. Like the weight's not too bad. It's certainly heavier than our SPR barrel, but the difference isn't crazy. Now for today's video, we're going to get out on the range and shoot both of these guys. And for my upper, we'll be using my standard lower that we've been using lately here. Magpul PRS stock, LaRue MBT trigger, 
And of course, this is a rifle length buffer tube with a rifle buffer and spring. And I tell you what, when I was out on the range with these two guys, it made me really, really appreciate the Magpul PRS stock. I've gotten so used to shooting this guy lately. It is so useful having a flat spot on the back of your stock that will sit in your rear bag really nice. Man, it makes all the difference in the world. I kind of struggled a little bit shooting the other lower. Yeah, this guy. This guy was, yeah, I was having fits here. And if you actually watch the gun, when I'm shooting the 18 incher, like every time it fires, you'll see it like during recoil, the whole gun kind of, you know, points upward a little bit because this guy has slid back on the bags a little bit and it just doesn't ride nice and smooth like I've gotten used to with that Magpul PRS. The other thing that took a little getting used to was the trigger. I'm, I'm lining up my excuses here, right? <laughs> but getting used to the, to the ALG trigger, and also the 16 power scope versus the 24 power scope. I've gotten so used to shooting a 24 that going back to the 16 was a little bit of a shock. Now, some of you might be happy to hear that I did not shoot with the suppressor for today's video. I wanted to make sure I had the gas blocks aligned and that they were both gonna function just fine without the suppressor. So what I did is I went back through some of my older videos and picked out some loads that had shot well in the SPR barrel. Now, most of these are reasonably light loads, right? I didn't want to go putting super hot rod loads into my brand new Predator barrel. I want to kind of take it easy here at the beginning. So only one of the loads we shoot today is really a hot, you know, a hot high velocity load. But I picked out bullets all the way from the 40 grain nozzle ballistic tip up to the 77 grain Sierra Match King. Wanted to cover, cover the weight range. One thing I was worried about was this Predator barrel has got a different chamber with a little bit shorter throat. So I was afraid that some of my older loads, I need to wipe all this goop off my hands. So I was wondering that some of my older loads for the SPR barrel weren't going to hit fit into this new chamber. You know, we would be jamming into the lands, but I was happy to find out that none of them were into the lands of the new, of the new uh, barrel. I took some measurements on that throat, which, you know, one barrel is nicely worn in and, you know, throat erosion is a thing. Your, your distance to the lands is going to creep on you as the barrel wears in. So the numbers would probably be very different for two new barrels, but at least for my old SPR and the new Predator, I saw as much as a 90 thousandth different difference, but it was, you know, it, it depended on the bullet. I guess the ogive shape and stuff. Some of them weren't quite as much, some were down it was only like a 40 thousandths difference. So it varied a little bit, but the good news is all of the old loads, our overall length that we shot previously fits just fine in this new barrel. The other thing I was happy to find is all of the brass that I've prepped for my SPR barrel. It fits into the chamber of the Predator barrel as well. No problems there. So pretty good compatibility so far. So let's get down to some loading and some shooting. Now, whenever I shot this, I wasn't really sure if I was going to make a video about it or not. So out on the range, I wasn't talking to the camera or providing in any uh, commentary. So we'll do this one, one load at a time. We'll talk about it, hit the range, then come back and have a look at the groups. The first bullet I want to test is the 40 grain Nosler Ballistic Tip Varmint. This bullet shot really well in our previous tests with the SPR barrel. And one of the powders we tested was Reloader 7. Reloader 7 is an extremely fast burning powder for 223. So one of the reasons I chose this was to find out whether Reloader 7 would run the gas system, the rifle length gas system of the Predator barrel. I was afraid that it wouldn't, right? Like super fast burning uh, powder, it lowers that gas port pressure. And that's, that's what I was afraid of. So the load was 22.9 grains, CCI 41 primers. That's what I'm gonna shoot all the way through today is CCI 41s. The overall length was 2.260 and the brass was Lake City brass. So let's go out, let's shoot the 18, then we'll shoot the 20, and then we'll come back here to the bench.
All right, so you might have noticed it did not lock the bolt back on the Predator barrel. Not a huge deal. Like I said, kind of expecting it. This was a test of that. So it's certainly possible that maybe I don't have my gas block aligned just right. But then again, you know, Reloader 7, that's awfully fast. But I'll tell you what, as we go through today, man, this rifle length gas system, it definitely is a smoother shooter than the mid length gas system with the carbine length uh, buffer and stuff, right? The rifle length gas system with the rifle length buffer tube and buffer, it just, it's, it's, it's smooth, but just not enough gas with Reloader 7. All right, the groups, I was expecting a little bit better with the 18 incher. Back when we shot the video with this powder and bullet combination, the groups were itty bitty, but we did have the suppressor on there. That changes things up. And 1.20 inches, that's not the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. The new barrel shot a 0.87 inch group. The velocity difference between the two was 96 feet per second. That seemed like quite a bit for two inches of barrel. I was pretty surprised by that. So that got us off to a decent start. The next powder and bullet I want to shoot is Hodgton Varget and the 50 grain Hornady Z-Max. This is the same as the V-Max. So 50 grain Hornady V-Max slash Z-Max. The ones I have with the green tip just happen to be the, the Z-Max version. We're shooting 25.0 grains of Varget at a 2.240 inch overall length. So let's go see how those shoot. All right, so no function issues whatsoever that time, right? VAR gets a little bit slower burning and the rifle length gas system had no problems with it. Let's look at the groups and things are looking better. 0.71 inches with the 18 inch barrel and 0.81 inches with the 20 inch barrel. And we had a 78 feet per second difference between the two. So, so far, so good. So moving right along, next is the 55 grain Sierra Blitz King. This has been a good shooting bolt for us, and I wanted to shoot Vitavori N133. It's another pretty fast burning powder that I thought maybe the rifle link system would have a problem with. We're shooting 23.5 grains of it, and our overall length is 2.260. Let's go see if they'll shoot. All right, no function issues whatsoever with the rifle link gas system, and the groups are getting better. The 18 inch shot a 0.56 inch group, and the 20 shot a 0.53 inch group. That's good stuff. Velocity difference of 90 feet per second. So it's all good. Something like similar performance is, is basically all I was hoping for. Because like I mentioned, the SPR barrel's been shooting great for years now, and it looks like this Predator is gonna be a good shooter as well. So now we move on to some heavier stuff. And next is the 69 grain Sierra Match King. These guys right here. And for powder with the 69 grainer, I chose IMR 8208 XBR, 23.0 grains. And the overall length is 2.260. So let's go see if those will shoot.
All right, so neither barrel really liked that load. The 18 inch was a 0.85 inch group, which, you know, that's not the worst thing in the world. But the 1.6 inch group with the 20 incher was a little bit ugly. We got some work to do with the 69 grain sear match king, it looks like. And the thing is, all of these loads, you know, in previous videos, we had shot with a suppressor and that changes things. So it's no, it's no surprise that we run across one that's a little bit crappy. 69 feet per second difference there with 8208 XBR. So moving right along, next up is the 75 grain Horn D match, Boattail Hollow Point. I haven't given these bullets nearly as much time here on the channel as I should. Really, really good bullets. Like they stack up pretty well with the 77 grain Sierra Match King, which is what we're gonna shoot next. And like the 77 grain Burger OTM Tactical. Like these Hornadies are a good bit cheaper and they're not that far behind when it comes to performance. So with the 75 grain Hornady, I decided to shoot AR comp and we shot 21.5 grains at a 2.260 inch overall length. So let's get out there and see how that shot. All right, so this wasn't too bad, right? The 18 inch barrel shot a 0 0.90 inch group. The 20 shot a 1.08 inch group. That's not the worst thing, right? Our, our velocity difference between the two was 63 feet per second. And overall, just, you know, not a lot to be disappointed with so far. So the last bullet is the subject of our Mark 262 cloning videos. It's the 77 grain Sierra Match King. We've shot the heck out of this bullet in this 18 inch SPR barrel. <laughs> And I decided to go ahead and shoot IMR 8208XBR again, 24.0 grains of it. Now this is a hot load. All of our velocities up to this point have been pretty low, but this is a Mark 262 cloning type load. Very hot load, should give us about 2,750 feet per second out of the 18 inch barrel. So let's get out there and see how these guys shoot. All right, so it's not the greatest. 1.19 inches with the 18 incher and 0.88 inches out of our new 20 incher. So overall, I accomplished what I was after, and that was to get the 18 inch barrel put together and get it ready to give away to my friend or family member or associate. So that was all a success. It's all put together, it's sighted in, and we're ready to send it off into retirement. The 20 inch barrel is now broken in. Like our next 223 video, the Predator barrel is what you'll be seeing from this point forward. So in addition to these 30 rounds, I put another probably 30 or 40 rounds through it, which I'm gonna try and do a better job with this barrel of tracking my round count, but I feel like it's broken in. You know, before I shot these, I did go through kind of a couple cycles of shoot a few and clean it and shoot a few more and clean it, that sort of dance. And it all seems good so far. I have shot a few rounds with it, with the, uh, with the suppressor on there, and the rifle length gas system seems to respond pretty well to being suppressed. However, I did go ahead and pick up a 
superlative arms adjustable gas block that I'm planning to put on it, but I wanted to try the white oak gas block first because, well, it comes with it, so I might as well. And I know that a lot of you that don't have a suppressor, you know, you won't have any need for an adjustable gas block, so I wanted to test it out. Now, the price on these barrels is pretty much the same. It's $10 more for a Predator. The SPR barrel, its standard price is $275. Sometimes they go on sale, like maybe once a year. At one point they ran a, a sale, I think they were $199. I don't know if we'll ever see that again. That was a screaming deal. But normal price is $275, and to be honest, they're worth it. The Predator barrel is $285, so $10 bucks more. Plus, you get a free gas block where you don't with the SPR, or you get an included gas block, I won't call it free, where the SPR doesn't come with one. So price-wise, you know, pretty much the same. I was pretty surprised by the difference in velocity. Like we had, the most was 96 feet per second, and the least was 45 feet per second. I was, I was expecting something more like 45 feet per second, 20 or 25 feet per second per inch, you know, for our two inches of uh, additional barrel length. So some of those were a little bit higher than I was expecting. However, I will say my understanding, and I might be off base here, but I've read it in enough places to where I feel like it makes sense and I believe it. But I think kind of during barrel break in, you gain a little bit of velocity and then things flatten out. And then once the barrel starts getting worn out, you start losing velocity again. Have you guys heard that? I've never like charted it myself and tracked it and kind of seen it for myself, but that's what I've always read. Breaking, you'll pick up just a little bit, and then once the barrel starts getting worn out, you'll lose it again. If I'm crazy, let me know down in the comments. So has the 18 inch SPR barrel reached a point where its velocity is starting to drop? Like, is it getting worn out? Well, like the Mark 262 videos we've done where that's probably the series where we've kept the best track of velocities with different powders. The load we shot today with IMR 8208XBR, we were at 2,776 feet per second. So, so it hasn't lost anything since we did that video, which was a year ago probably. So I, I've forgotten the freaking point I was trying to make here. I, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but I was surprised to see up to a 96 feet per second difference with the two inches of extra barrel. That seems like a lot. So I think that's where we should leave this, folks. Just wanted to say thank you and good luck to our 18-incher and say welcome to the party to our 20-inch Predator barrel. It's got some big shoes to fill. Replacing this SPR barrel will not be an easy task. So that's it, folks. I'll see you guys next time.